every journey has got its own path. On my new journey, we are looking on the other side of your favorite TV personality, your favorite radio personality, oh, your favorite reporter, as well as your favorite blogger. On this show, we get to interview everything you need to know about them. Yeah, they've got their downsides as well as their low sides. So everything, the other side is right here on the show. My name is Pamela Bwati, and you're welcome to this new old journey. Decades of experience in putting smiles on the faces of many people. Joanna Beauty Salon specializes in everything beauty. Makeup, pedicure, everything hair. Hundreds of students have been given adequate hands-on training on how to become world-class makeup artists and pedicure professionals and many more. Call us up today, whether it's just for your personal grooming or for a guaranteed career. Call us. A Diana Beauty Salon and Academy, and you'll be glad you did. Diana's Beauty Salon and Academy, empowering and beautifying. All right, so welcome back from that quick break. Uh, before we move on, I'd like to acknowledge our proud sponsors. A very big thank you to Accra City Hotel for giving us their space. It's a very luxurious hotel. Come here with family and friends and have some great time as well as uh, Jayana Beauty Academy for making me up real good, as well as Beat 205 for gracing me with this very beautiful accessory. Enough of all the pleasantries, let me quickly move on to the main deal why we are here. Let's quickly switch over to the other side and find out our guest for today. Hello, Ridwan. Hello, Pamela. How are you doing? I'm fine. First and foremost, how does it feel being on the other side? Uh, it feels normal. It feels normal. Yeah, because Why? I've had instances where mm -hmm. I had to be on the other side and mm -hmm. people will question me and all of that. All so right. it feels normal. It feels normal. You're welcome to the show once again. Thank you. All Thank right. You. So, I mean, Ridwan, Karim, Dini, Osman. That's a very long <laughs> name. A very, very long name. I know. I know. Who is Ridwan? Uh, Ridwan is uh, a very young man who is passionate about life, passionate about his work, passionate about uh, everything that he sets out to achieve. And so that is basically about it. One very simple and very, very uh, happy-go-lucky guy. Alright, so he is a happy-go-lucky guy. If you happen to be watching GH1 television, you know he is the guy who does almost all the reporting. He's a daring guy, I must say. And of course, if you follow him on social media, he's part of the anti-sleep gang. They decide not to sleep, and they sleep just around 1 a.m. But we'll be getting into all of that. But you may mention of uh, some of the intangible things. I mean, you are daring, you are passionate and all of that. But let's calm down. To the grassroots. Who are you? Want to know more about family, uh, which ones, 
everything about you? Um, I come from a family of 10, that is in terms of the nuclear family. Mm -hmm. We are 10 in number. Mm -hmm. I am number 7. Wow. Yes, mm -hmm. the first born is a, a goalkeeper. In mm -hmm. fact, he keeps for the national yeah, team. Yeah, he makes a lot of noise on social media. <laughs> yeah, he keeps for the national team. What's as his we name? Speak. Uh, he's called Joseph. Joseph. Yes. What's his full name? Uh, Joseph Addo. Joseph Addo. Oh, yes. Okay. You have to know how to cook because mm -hmm. mommy will not allow you to sit and say that this job is for women and so it has to be just the women because the girls are just two. So. Mm -hmm. The boys also, need, also needed to go to the kitchen. So mm -hmm. the training, well, it was a mixed bag. And so everybody went through that training. It was indeed a mixed bag. Uh, but we remember you from the 2016 general elections. I mean, you really came into the forefront when you went all the way to the north. Tell us about that journey in 2016 when you were reporting uh, during the general elections. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I started uh, journalism with multimedia group mm -hmm. uh, and that was uh, in 2013 so in 2016 I left the multimedia group uh, from there I went to the class media group it was a new station I wanted to try something new and be part of the success story if it will turn out to be so so I joined uh, the class media group but in September I had to leave for oh, personal you're part reasons. Of those galaxy train. <laughs> oh those no! Who had to go from one media house to the other. No, no. Uh -huh. I think the reasons were very personal. At a point, I realized that my prospects were not directly in line with the with the company's vision because it was changing. So I needed to move on. So I was there for like two weeks. I was unemployed. Mm -hmm. Two weeks. Yeah. And you were worried it, for just two I, weeks. I, I, I was not worried because I wouldn't be able to survive. I was worried because it was boring sitting at home. I mean, it's always exciting to be on the field, mm -hmm. interacting with people. I mean, getting to the studio with all the pressure that comes to the work. And you know one thing? Sometimes you complain of stress, but they can give you say one week off and you start feeling bored mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. So that was the feeling that I was going through at the time. I had a number of offers. I had one that was a new company around East Legon. They were starting something new. So I went there, we did, it was almost nailed down. The agreement was almost nailed down. But then again, I got a call from EIB. They had started the news, I think almost a week when I had that call. I. We had a conversation. I didn't really have to go through that rigorous interviews that people normally go through. So they had a conversation on phone and I started. Yeah. I started on a very good foot uh, because I, the very day I started, I did a story about NEMA, the election and the fact that it is a flashpoint. And also about the fact that the people themselves are not happy about that perception that people have about the community and so they want to take advantage of the electioneering period to change that whole perception. So I did a story and Pamela, the mm -hmm. feedback was overwhelming. And so that is how the challenge started. Then you would also want to go out of your comfort zone, do a lot of research, a lot of, um, uh, put a lot of meticulousness in your work mm -hmm to be able to churn out the best of stories. So I did that until it got to the election and I was sent to the Northern region. I must say that was exciting. That's where you come from? No, I'm from the Upper East region. Okay. My mom is from Upper West, okay. so I'm not directly, I can't even speak the dialect. Why can't you? Uh, because it's, it's, I'm not Dagomba. So, so what, what do you speak? What I speak Hausa, I speak English, I speak Fanti, I speak Yafutu, I speak Chi. All that. Yes, I speak all that because my dad is a prisons officer. I mean, he's gone on retirement mm -hmm. now, so you move from one place to the yeah. other. So I actually grew up in the central region. Okay. I started my basic school in Cape Coast, mm -hmm. then we came to Winneba, where I finished my basic school, had admission to go to the secondary school. Mm -hmm. Then so I came. To, high school? I went to okay. say to oh, Boys okay. College in okay. Kumasi. In okay. fact, it's the best senior high school yeah, in Ghana. Right, yeah. Yeah. Just, just move on. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, uh, one of the scenes or one of the 
uh, uh, scenes I remember vividly of mm. you reporting was when there was a curfew in one of the areas and you were in the security van mm. reporting. I was really scared for you in one. I was like, <laughs> that was so much bravado for mm. you to go there to mm. report. Mm -hmm. uh, that was um, after the election, mm -hmm. actually. Um, it was in February mm -hmm. when we heard that the... I'm sure you know about the Bimbela yes. chieftaincy dispute. Yes. It's been, been back and forth over the years. So there was a renewed clash. A lot of people died. I mean, women and children were most affected. So even government had to renew the curfew. So. We needed to go there because what we have also realized is that because it is far, then the media houses here rely on their correspondents. And a lot of the time, these correspondents don't even visit the community. They have a contact there. So they call somebody, get the information, and they pass them on or they pass it on to those of us in Accra. And so it might not necessarily reflect the situation on the ground. And so we decided that we would want to go there. I remember the day before I left, Nanaba was so apprehensive. She said, when you go, be very careful, be very careful, and all of that. But I said, we'll, we'll get the story told. So we, I went to the northern region. I got to Tamale, and Bimbala is far. It's like a six-hour journey from Tamale. So we got to Tamale. We needed to get a private car, and the driver was like, this area that you're going, be very careful. Some of the people, they lurk in the bushes. So when you are passing, they can, when they, and they suspect you, they can just shoot you. So be very careful. I said, well, I'm just going to do my job. As far as I'm doing it in the spirit of balance and neutrality, I'm sure I wouldn't run into that trouble. So we got to Bimbela. Fortunately for us, we were able to meet the commander, Mr. Ania. He's a very receptive uh, man. I think now he's been transferred to the voter region. So he actually briefed us on the situation on the ground and also showed us the homesteads of the factions. So we went to one faction, we listened to the other. Then we, whilst we were at one faction's home, we got information the other faction was actually hiding, uh, hoping that if we don't come to them, then they will deal with us. Wow. So, yeah, so we said, okay, that's fine. So we finished and we managed to speak to the other mm -hmm. side as well. When we finished, it was almost time to the curfew. And we got to the town, there was so much life. And immediately the curfew started, every place was quiet. The market, no, it was as if there was nobody in the town. So I felt there was the need to do a piece to camera and give our viewers a sense of the, 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 the atmosphere in the town. So. Um, we didn't have a company car, there was a private car, it was a very small car. So when the soldiers and the police officers started patrolling the town, they were moving, blaring their horns and all of that. And I said, okay, that's what we are going to do. We need to do a piece to camera, describing the situation in town. So the cameraman actually sat on the door in front, the car door in front. Then I also sat on the door back, which could have gone off and yes. could have just yes. fallen on the ground but we wanted to do that and so the car was moving they were tooting their horns and i was describing the situation and it, it came out so beautifully yeah, I and vividly remember that yeah and vividly. so it came out so beautifully and it added a lot to the story and so at the end of the day we came back with a very beautiful story and pamela mm -hmm. the very day the story went on air after it ended I remember Nana Banamwa and Francis Aban were the news readers. Immediately the story ended, they were clapping in the studio. And the feedback was great. And eventually, it won me an award, not just nationally, but even on the continent level. And so, that has been the story about Bimbela mm -hmm. and why we needed to cover that story. I'd like to commend you on that. We'll get to the award mm -hmm. uh, pretty soon. But tell us about EIP. I mean, we all know uh, there's this perception out there that you might have chanced upon a pot of gold at EIP. That's how come <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we are interested because you can't be working at EIP and then. <laughs> um, a lot of money. Uh -huh. Well, it depends on your definition for a lot of money. But I would say that I'm comfortable. Yeah, comfortable. There is nothing more gratifying than having a team that believes in togetherness, 
that believes in being there for each other or one another and for me that is very crucial you go to certain newsrooms and the aura or the atmosphere that exists there is so unhealthy I mean people are trying to pull each other down and all of that but but at EIB I can tell you for a fact that it is not like that from the CEO to the very last person we work together we appreciate one another they appreciate hard work when I finished the election coverage from the northern region the CEO called me into his office he was full of praises he was full of appreciation and for me that is enough if you're working for people and they make you feel that I appreciate your sweat I appreciate the hard work you put into putting the company out there it is enough regardless of how much you're taking at the end of the day when those commendations come it makes you happy okay people assume that on air personalities are naturally journalists let's hear your story are you a professional <laughs> no because this debate has been going on yeah. for only god knows how and recently you know what has been going on in the country with the journalists of the year at the just energy ga yeah. awards so tell us are you a professional journalist yes i'm a professional journalist mm. even though i started practicing before i went to school Oh. Yeah, I started, when I started with multimedia, I hadn't even started GIJ, but I started because I discovered I wanted to do journalism very early. It was as far back as when I was in basic school. So I started practicing, training myself, you know, those times, I, my mother had a Nokia phone at the time, I had so rest in peace. I picked the Nokia phone get a used newspaper, hide my corner somewhere, try to do the voiceover, try to compare, I mean, Roland, the likes of Roland, uh, Henry Malm, and all those guys, Gideon Aikwe on TV, and I just wanted to be a broadcaster. But then again, I kept watching the news, and I realized that stories were being told about real people, about the challenges that they were facing. So I thought that I could add that as well. So why don't I sharpen my writing skills so i got addicted to the african writer series where the language is so solid you have very experienced writers putting pieces together and all of that so i, I cultivated the habit of reading at that very, very age so i started then I, I was always you know you could feel it when i was in high school people knew everybody knew i wanted to become a journalist and so that's how come I got the opportunity to start with multimedia before I joined GIJ. So it was at GIJ I had a professional training. But the issue about the GJA, mm -hmm. I don't know whether you would want us to talk we, about we, it. We, we will go to that because mm -hmm. uh, there are rumors that some people who even were awarded haven't received their plaques yet, which is surprising to mm -hmm. me. We'll get into that. But you also won an award. Yes, I was adjudged the best journalist for rural reporting. Rural reporting. Yes. Uh, what's your plaque? Uh, I don't have my plaque. You, because, oh, you are part of those people who yeah, don't have A lot of us didn't get the plaque Why? because uh, the plaques were not ready on the day of the award. What, what have they been saying? It's coming. Uh, well, it's coming. Uh, you know the, the um, GJ had a turbulent year in 2017 and so I mean the elections and all of that. So they, the, the award had to be organized in, a, in, in somewhat a haste. And so on the day of the award, uh, that was when they expected the plaques to arrive. I'm giving you this information based on what the president told me. So we were hoping that, they were hoping that the plaques would come on the day, but the person who is in charge of the plaques, and he has been doing it over the years. Unfortunately, he couldn't meet the deadline. And so we couldn't get the plaques, but there was a generic plaque when your, your name is mentioned, you use that to take your photograph. But we're given the assurance that the plaques will come later. And also the, 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 the prizes will also come later. So we well, have not received any you, cash prize yet. How we, much were you supposed to have received? We don't know yet. And it hasn't come as well? No, we, we, that has not been disclosed. So we are hoping okay. that. Maybe by the end of the month we'll receive it. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Just maybe. But uh, before we go on a quick commercial break, as we, we've hit on awards. Let's just quickly run through the number of awards you have received. Uh, we have some here. 
this, these ones were on the student level uh -huh. and so um, I had this one when I was in GIJ okay. uh, this one is for um, outstanding, student, uh, outstanding student radio news presenter of the year hey, wow. yes and that was in 2015 2015 yes i was okay. still in school yes. and I, I was doing radio i, remember I was we were on all class in the same yeah you know, studio yes. you know uh -huh. and rehearsing and exactly. all of that yeah so mm -hmm. that was uh, for the news radio news presenter of the year wow. yeah and this one is for outstanding uh, student, student reporter of the year. You know, whilst I was in school, yes. I was working, I yes. was reporting. And he wasn't coming for lectures. <laughs> <laughs> he was I never. Know. So I was, you know, but I always delivered on exactly, my assignments. I was wondered. I was always <clears throat> asking your friends. Mm. So how are you going to write your exams? How I are did. You? I did manage. This is a very and this heavy one, one. Yes. Zenio Award for Excellence in Media. Yes. One currently Osman Peace and Security See, reporting. reporting. Yes. This. Yes. This 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 is really big for me, you know, because I have been in this job for uh, almost half a decade, and um, this was my first professional award. It didn't come from Ghana, it didn't come from West Africa, it came from the continent. The award organizers had hundreds of entries, almost five hundred applicants. You know, and for your work to be recognized and for you to be a judge as the best journalist in peace and security reporting on the continent, it was very big. And I had joined, I mean, GH1 News is very young, it's, it's just a year. And this, for me, is everything because that is the first award for the newsroom. Mm -hmm. And it didn't come from Ghana, like I said. It came on the continent. So I had this one in, in Ethiopia, mm -hmm. Addis Ababa. You went all the way to yes, Ethiopia to uh, pick it up. Yeah, the African Union and uh, the African Media Initiative mm -hmm. organized this very particular award. Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of uh, brilliant journalists there as well. But this particular category, uh, I beat other two journalists, uh, an investi two investigative journalists actually, one from Cameroon and one from Cote d'Ivoire. I remember the one from Cameroon did something about diamond conflict and the other one also did a very comprehensive piece, piece about um, uh, how uh, the Boko Haram insurgency was spreading to other places, so the issue about radicalism. So those were the two journalists that I competed with. But God being so good, favor found me and I think it was my time to pick this one. We are really proud of your story and congratulations for picking mm. And it was the Bimbila story that won me. Oh, that award. Yeah. congratulations. Thank you. Wish you all the best. Thank you. I've said that even when I decide to be a full time news anchor or maybe I, I take up a managerial role, I would want to, you know, once in a while go on the field. It's exciting. You are giving us hints. <laughs> so we'll oh, no, 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 no. You hanging your boots any but don't answer that now. We'll go on a quick break. Oh, no. When we come, we'll be finding out if our very own Ridwan will stop reporting and only focus on news anchoring or taking a very big position when it comes to managerial issues. Make sure you stay with us. We'll be right back.
decades of experience in putting smiles on the faces of many people. Joanna Beauty Salon specializes in everything beauty. Makeup, pedicure, everything hair. Hundreds of students have been given adequate hands-on training on how to become world-class makeup artists and pedicure professionals and many more. Call us up today, whether it's just for your personal grooming or for a guaranteed career. Call us at Diana Beauty Salon and Academy and you'll be glad you did. Diana's Beauty Salon and Academy. Empowering and beautifying. So welcome back. We're still on the other side with broadcast journalist Ridwan Karim Dini Osman. He is with the EIB group and we're still getting to know him more. Most of us <laughs> hear him, see him, but we do not know a lot about him. Yeah. So we're still delving into what exactly uh, happened in 2020. I, I, had, I had forgotten about that issue. I've just taken it in my stride. You know, once you want to do this job, Unless, of course, you would want to be an armchair journalist, mm -hmm. then, of course, you wouldn't go through all of that. But you, 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 it, was, it was a normal experience for me, except that I, I thought I didn't deserve that assault. Mm. Because there are instances that you push, and so when you get injured, you, you, you say that, okay, you warranted it. But it, how it happened, I was not expecting the guy to hit me. What did happen? Uh, okay, I closed from the office. I had closed, I was supposed to have gone home. Then the cameraman came and said that there's a fire outbreak. I just had a distress call that there's a fire outbreak at Ashford, the one around the industrial area. So we needed to go and cover it. We got there, I mean, we saw a lot of people outside. Then we also got a hint that there were other reporters who were already in, but we were told that we would not be allowed to enter with a camera. So I said, fine. Then I would, I would want to enter, see what has accounted for the fire and what is being done about it. So I managed to enter. I met other journalists from multimedia. We started interacting. They were giving me leads and all of that. Then the warehouse where the source of the fire was, I mean, you could see smoke billowing from that building. So I said, okay, let me enter and see how they're going about with the fire fighting and um, also have a sense of the extent of damage. So I entered. I was there. Then a certain guy asked me, where am I coming from? I said, I'm a journalist. He said, I should walk out. I said, ah, but I, the directive was that you shouldn't enter with a camera. And I don't have a camera. I'm, I just, I'm just here. So they walk out. So fine, I'm leaving. So whilst I'm there, whilst I was there, then I had a phone call. He was, by that time, I was moving and he was following me. I had a phone call. I was speaking Hausa. Apparently, the guy could speak Hausa as well. So I told the person, it was a call from one of my siblings. So I told the person, I'll call back. Then the guy just responded, said something in Hausa, snatched the phone for me. Before I could say Jack Robinson, mm -hmm. oh, the guy had given me about two slaps. Wow. And at that point, he actually blinded me with a slap. I couldn't see, I couldn't help them to tear up. So I was just weeping and calling for help. Mm -hmm. So I think I was taken outside. Then I was put in the ambulance and um, I was taken to the police hospital. So I was on admission at the police hospital. Uh, we wanted to pursue the case, but um, the thing happened exactly a week before my mother died. My mother heard of it. She spoke to me on phone and said that I should let it go. I should just let it go because, I mean, those things are bound to happen. But I should know that God is with me. So, a week after that particular incident, my mom passed on. I had to focus on the funeral. I was so broken. I needed to, you know, put myself together and how we can see to the successful funeral rites and all of that. So I decided let, to let go. So I didn't follow up on that case. So that is what really happened, mm -hmm. you know. And it got a lot of people talking. Yes. People were actually teasing me that I was crying. Yes. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but Rich One, mm -hmm. on a very serious note, what does that tell you about Ghana's press freedom? Do you think we have achieved the ultimate? Because you were just doing your job and then you received double slaps. 
does it tell you about press freedom in Ghana? Well, um, Ghana is better when you consider what is happening in other countries. After you receive those two slaps, you still yes. think Ghana is better? Yeah, when you consider mm -hmm. press freedom on the continent, mm -hmm. a lot of countries are really going through a lot. A lot of journalists cannot even operate. They can ask questions. They can interview. But in Ghana, we can interview. You can have politicians being put on radio, putting them in a very tough position and all of that. I think that in the case of Ghana, it is just the case of a few bad nuts that are trying to um, put everything in a bad light. You, you, you get the point that I'm making. I think press, I mean, considerably, press freedom is, is cool in Ghana. If you go to Senegal, if you go to, I mean, Côte d'Ivoire, if you go to Cameroon, journalists are under constant attack. You understand? But I think that we will see closure to all of this when there is that political will and commitment to pass the right to information bill. Because if that law is in place, then you have the right to walk into any establishment at all and say that I need information on this particular matter. And that person will be obliged to disclose that information. But until that bill, that age-old bill, mm -hmm. that for God knows why has been dragging and gathering dust in Parliament, mm -hmm. is passed, then we will continue to have some of these pockets of assault against journalists. Well, let's wait and see, because this government mm -hmm. uh, has promised to pass this law mm -hmm. before we get out. So let's just wait and see how things pan out with mm -hmm. that. But finally, in our Hard Talk segment, there's this issue that has gone viral in Ghana uh, where everybody has the opinion on the t payment of TV license fees. As on-air personalities, we, we also have a say. What you make of it? Well, I think that um, it's not a bad idea. People feel that, that there hasn't been any improvement. I mean, the state broadcaster was there before all the other stations came. But you watch it. And the look and feel, I mean, you, the, the, the aesthetics, you, you don't get that so from the state I, I, broadcaster. Mm. I'm just building, I'm building uh -huh. my response. Uh -huh. And you go to Kenya uh -huh. and the state broadcaster is on top. Yeah. You know, you can't even compare the state broadcaster to the other private media houses that you have there. Then it, 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 it puts us in a very difficult position to pay the TV licenses. But having said that, I would pay, and I'll urge everybody to pay as well. But then again, we would want to issue a caveat that the payment of the TV license will take a nose dive if we continue to see the things we are seeing at the state broadcaster. If you are paying, we are supposed to be seeing improvement. And if that improvement is not happening, we might be compelled not to pay in the course of time. I'm sure you're very happy, of course, with the halting of the payment of the TV license. The, hal the, the, the halting of the prosecution. In, in, exactly. Uh -huh, of those who default mm -hmm. to make payment. So yeah. you are okay? You are happy? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. All right, so we'll, we'll just end this hard talk mm. and just move on to a very lighter note. We get to find out your favorite food. And of course, that moment you've <laughs> all been waiting for, whether indeed he's married, <laughs> Single, one, one, no matter what it is, we'll get into that. But just after this quick break, we'll be right back.
decades of experience in putting smiles on the faces of many people. Diana Beauty Salon specializes in everything beauty. Makeup, pedicure, everything hair. Hundreds of students have been given adequate hands-on training on how to become world-class makeup artists and pedicure professionals and many more. Call us up today, whether it's just for your personal grooming or for a guaranteed career. Call us at Diana Beauty Salon and Academy and you'll be glad you did. Diana's Beauty Salon and Academy. Empowering and beautifying. going to the, the lighter side of this interview where we get to know the very other side of Ridwan, uh, like what he does when all is said and done, lights, camera, action, we are off air, what do you do to relax Ridwan? That's a very difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> I come out as a very sociable person. Mm -hmm. I like to interact with people a lot, mm -hmm. but I'm not the hardcore chilling type mm -hmm. like the way people would want to wind down on a yeah. Friday night like want your, to... your manager George he does that <laughs> almost every weekend shouting at me for yeah so people like clubbing uh -huh. you know having conversations over bottles and all mm -hmm. of that I, I don't do that. I think I and also because of my upbringing I'm very independent minded I'm very indoor person, so I would what what really excites me or I find relaxing is getting the opportunity to interact with people who are intellectually stimulated. Oh, I, I, I saw that coming because every response of yours is too intellectual. Like I, I just <laughs> ask a simple question, you know, like what do you do to relax? <laughs> and you are taking me to yeah, I'm, I'm building. Like, so building. that people would not say that Red One is antisocial. Your I'm not antisocial. Contract are built. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean that is basically about me. Uh -huh. I love to interact with people a lot. Mm -hmm. And also I will I, I love to be very indoor. Mm -hmm. uh, but once a while I would I love live band. Mm -hmm. So maybe sitting at La Palme over the weekend, okay. having just a glass of juice and enjoying the mm -hmm. The live band and all of that for me is is okay. I, I do social media a lot too. I was coming to that. <laughs> I was really coming to that, but let's yeah. hold on with the social media and talk still about hanging out mm. at your favorite place, enjoying life. But do you do that alone or you go with your partner? Um, <laughs> I do that a lot of the time alone. Oh, but sometimes Are you alone. I'm alone. I see. Do you have a partner? Um, In simple terms, are you dating? Uh, dating. <laughs> are you married? I'm single. You are. Oh, this is news. I'm. 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 I'm not married. I'm single. Are you dating? Um. What is dating? Oh, please don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> please, red one. No, don't. What, Let, what do you say I, you are I dating? Don't uh -huh. Please don't take me there. What do you say you are dating? Are you in a relationship? Are you seeing somebody? Like, what else can I? Ask? Like, I'm, 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 I'm in. A, I'm in a relationship. You are dating somebody. Yeah, I'm in a relationship. I am dating somebody. The person doesn't want to be known. Why? For reasons best known like to you, her. Always hearing this, the person For reasons that's... best known to her, she doesn't want to be known. She only wants to be known uh -huh. when we have like just a few weeks to time the knot, which will happen in the uh, the father's future. <laughs> okay, father's future. Yes, but I'm I'm I'm, I'm seeing somebody. She's been very loyal to me. She's been very supportive. I couldn't have asked for a better person. Oh. Yeah. Is she also in the I media? I wish I could mention your name, but you know what? I don't want to disobey. <laughs> Is she also in the media? No, 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 She's no, no, also no, in no, no, no. She's in the corporate world. Corporate world. For much more corporate. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. So, what's your favorite food, with one? Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have one. You don't have one. Yeah, but I I love teasers. To Zafi, uh, with any soup at all, soup whether Koka, Bushishi, Ayoyo, <laughs> whichever one, I love it. Mm. I also like um, Fufu as well. Okay. I don't want the the choba Fufu. Which one do you want? I want the typical Ikrasi Fufu. Which the one that looks like a herbal mixture. 
but it's actually a soup. You know, <laughs> ebune, ebune. Okay. with all the precocious, with the yeah, ajini, yeah. the kobe, and everything. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 Let's come to social media. I mean, we follow each other on uh, Facebook, and you are very popular. I mean, you post I, something. I disagree. No, wait, let me, <laughs> what is your definition for popularity? Let me my point too. <laughs> you post something and in a split second you have over 100 likes. Well, it depends on what you're posting. Uh -huh. It depends on what you're posting. If what you're posting has a, a human interest element, people would want to. It doesn't matter. Of late, you have, you have joined in posting very hilarious things. And you make us laugh on social media. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it, especially you, in the nights. You, you, you know. When you can't sleep. Yeah. In the, and it's good for me, you uh -huh. know, the anti sleep movement. Uh -huh. It's an abstract organization. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, we keep awake, we don't sleep. But it's also good. It, it, Is it, it deliberate? Uh, it's deliberate. You don't sleep deliberately? Yeah, I don't sleep. And it, it, it enables me to meet all the deadlines that I need to meet, you know. Uh, sometimes you need to respond to mail, sometimes uh, you need to put together a proposal, a plan, your boss needs it the next morning. You need to do all of that. Maybe you have gone to shoot, you need to write the script and all of that. You need to do it. And me, I am able to write very well when I'm in my room. You know, everywhere is quiet, I'm lying on my bed, I have my laptop, you know. Then you are able to bring your creative juices alive. And so, for me, that is it. And it is in the dead of the night that I'm able to do that. So, the anti-sleep movement couldn't have come at a better time. Mm. That's when you decide to be very loud on social media. <laughs> yeah, because when people are, here, people are excited, they mm -hmm. comment, then... It keeps you awake. Yeah. I don't want to resort to coffee and all the energy drink <laughs> because they have their repercussions. So as that's well. your way of staying awake. Yeah. Interesting, Richard. Yeah. Interesting. But uh, how do you manage fame? I mean, or how are you managing fame? Because you're still. I, I I don't I don't <laughs> agree with you that I'm famous. I, you are. Come on. I, 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 no I, diplomacy I, here. Come mm. on. You are. Well, I, I, once in a while, I get people giving me feedback on maybe stories that I have done or people would want to let you know how well you're doing and how they appreciate and how they think you shouldn't relax, you should continue doing what you're doing. I think if you're speaking about feedback, I get that a lot because um, people yeah. are particularly impressed with my sort of journalism, my way of telling stories. Uh, maybe the way I read the news, they think mm -hmm. I speak well and all of that. Mm -hmm. These are feedback. It doesn't necessarily have to give room for complacency. It challenges you to do a lot of hard work, do a lot of research, read more, to be able to do better than what you're currently doing. Okay. So people are giving you feedback. And they expect more from you. Expect more from you. Well, talking about feedback, what has been your most embarrassing moment on set? I mean, I can look through and I have quite a number, but I know <laughs> about me, so tell uh, me what embarrassing, embarrassing moments. Yes. Uh, on TV, not yet. So when? Uh, when I was at Class FM. Uh -huh. This one was very embarrassing, uh -huh. you know. Tell us about it. Um, you know the nature of my voice. I have a very light voice. And radio, you don't see the personality behind the voice. So it was during the electioneering period. Uh, there was a statement from the Electoral Commission. The statement had just dropped. There was the need for somebody to rush to the studio and read the statement. Mm -hmm. And um, at the time, India, uh, Ghana's ambassador to India, mm -hmm. the current India, uh, Ghana ambassador to India, Michael Quay Jr., was the one on air so when i read the statement then he asked who is the other lady on air mm -hmm. you know then the <laughs> uncle had to say that no this is not a lady this is my mm -hmm. uncle and my colleague Ridwan, who had just read the statement um i i didn't feel bad about it mm -hmm. but it was awkward for him to have said that but i i understood because i was doing radio I had a, I didn't have the baritone that you usually hear in the male's but voice. But now you have it. 
What happened? I think gradually I'm getting yeah, it. You see, the more you grow, the more you start having the moustache, the more it comes. So that has been it. But I haven't not really had an awkward moment on television yet. You are jumping the gun. <laughs> All right, you have you have a spot for talking. You talk well, but let's find out if you can draw well. Really? We are moving on to the last part of this interview. Um, oh yes, no! One of the artistic, well, you're artistic when it comes to words and writing, but who not interpret you drawing? We'll get to the board. Oh no, you should have told me this. I won't tell you. I mean, that's why it's the other side. Well, my pre-technical my pre-technical skills class uh -huh. back at the basic school uh -huh. was a nightmare it was always hell for me Myself. I, I, I remember it. the teacher had to use the clip on my ear all the time because I was not paying attention I would draw the borderline uh -huh. and you go to Zongo and the other <laughs> one will go to I mean, a residential well, well, let's area. put all of that on the board right now what am I drawing? You draw anything, any scene you could draw the bimbala scene <laughs> Let's see how good of an artist Rich One is. Let's get to the board. And really? Right now. Yes. <laughs> Uh, this uh, sketch that you see represents I mean, the continent Africa. Mm -hmm. Then the one you have in the middle is actually a microphone which represents the media. Now you see different colors all around the microphone. It shows you that Africa is a hotspot when it comes to information. Everybody is tapping into happenings in Africa to give information. So not Africans who are just interested in things that are happening in Africa. We have all over the world, everybody is interested. But in getting information from Africa, how is it treated? Sometimes people have had cause to question the way the international media represents the image of Africa. But I would want to dedicate this sketch to the memory of the late Komla Dumo, who actually said that in telling the African story, make sure you achieve balance and fairness and Pamela it simply means that now everybody is talking about the free SHS program everybody is saying that the government is on course but at the same time you go to the remotest part of this country and you realize that some communities don't even have basic schools there are a lot of children there who might never experience formal education in their lives so it's good free SHS is in but those kids who are there who have not even seen school before, why can't we talk about it to get government to do that? So we broadcast free SHS, but we broadcast the community that doesn't have a school. Then we are achieving balance. Then again, something is happening. Government has issued a statement. Why don't you go to the people who are affected by what is going and also get the aside of the statement? Then you are achieving fairness and balance as well. So this is just essentially a gift to the continent and of course the world over. That in telling the African story, make sure you achieve balance, achieve fairness. More importantly, use African talent to tell the African story. Because we are Africans and we know how best we can tell our own stories. Very deep. Yes. Yes. And so that, that is the brain behind what you're seeing on, on the board. Interesting. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So our guest for today has been Ridwan Karim Dini Osman, a broadcast journalist with the EIB group. We talked everything from journalism to personal life and now to the drawing board where you had this wonderful, epic piece. John, many thanks to you for doing the watching. So until then, we are back again, same time, same channel. I'm Pamela, until then, adios.